Okay, William, this piece has a very interesting title. I hope you could tell people what the title is and what this is about. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be really interesting. The title of this piece is um, The Gothic Nature of Masculinity. And the piece, it, it may not be apparent right away, but the base of the piece is a, a, a sculpture of a giant penis and testicles. And that's where the piece started. And I had, I had this image and it's just a good, for me, it's a good place to work from where I saw, I see the piece and I don't quite understand it. And maybe it scares me a little bit. Um, just in terms of like, like I'm totally convinced in one part of me and I'm totally afraid to to defend it on another in another part of me, but uh, so I made the base sculpture, and then um, and then it sat for a couple of years, which is not unusual because the way I thought I was going to finish it didn't happen, and uh, and then after really considering what I was trying to talk about and what I was trying to get at, um, I superimposed this a bat skeleton, which is what all this external things are um, in scale. So this bat skeleton is scale wise uh, is the same, it, it, like it is, it, it, there, <laughs> even though this is blown up, this, the, the bat skeleton and the, the penis are in scale with each other, if that makes sense. And so I just superimposed um, the, for the body of the bat, this penis. And what I was trying to get at is um, so much of the underlying thinking that surrounds masculinity and so much of um, how we're socialized and indoctrinated and how that filters out and plays out in our lives and in society and uh, I really started to think about it like um, it wasn't all doom and gloom, but it was um, like for me, like the gothic nature is talking about like uh, 50s horror movies, you know, and I know it means more than that, but th there's a certain like camp and humor, um, but it doesn't get away from the darkness and uh, there's so many ways that, for me, it just like, this is another way I like to think about my work, is create or cluster together a bunch of questions that I'm really interested in and then leave them, you know? And hopefully the work does that. It like, it clusters together like this small constellation of questions that is compelling in a way. I mean, to me it is and, um, yeah, I mean, I, there's very few of my pieces that I feel like I fully understand, which I think is a good thing, you know? Uh, that's good. Nice juxtaposition. It's like, if you, you wouldn't know that to see it. I, I see the bat. The other thing looks a little bit like something from Alien. Yeah. So that's like coming out of his body. So that's, that, that's a good description of what you're doing. Um, this piece is called The Seductive Nature of Bitterness. And... Um, for me, the piece is about uh, masculinity, and, and I don't want to sound too trendy, but like probably the quickest way to describe it would be to toxic masculinity, about how men um, armor themselves and surround uh, their social gatherings with pageantry and, and and uh, celebration, whether that's football or parades or parliamentary procedure. I just, um, there's a certain element to it that is about uh, structure and order in a, in a way to, as an effect to cover up maybe nature. This is a piece, a collaborative piece uh, that was executed between myself 
uh, and an artist from Tecate, Mexico, uh, Roscoe. And uh, we were paired by a curator to create a work for the uh, Tecate City Gallery. And um, we met a few times and came up with a framework and decided that what we wanted to do, that we'd, that we'd decide on, anyway, what we ended up doing was coming up with a framework that was about two skulls in dialogue with these arms coming out of their mouths. And, uh, and then we retreated to our workspaces and, and produced the pieces without any, uh, like we had no idea what the other person was doing. And um, the point of the piece, I, I, for me and I think for Roscoe too, was that it's a dialogue about um, the border. It's a dialogue about uh, about culture and about politi politics and about speaking across the border. And there's um, there's an attempt to be to inject humor into this and have it be uh, not so dire and dark, but. Um, like one of the main things that we both keyed on to was, and again, we didn't know what the other person was doing, but um, like this is my side of the piece and it's all monochromatic. And, um, and the color that he employed and the, the 3D into 2D um, was just, uh, I think perfect for the piece. And and what we were talking about in prepar preparation was like uh, like speaking across culture and um, what's actual and what's fake, what's real and what's 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 not. And um, and we both like this idea of like dealing with something um, like dealing with the threat. You know, dealing with like the pose of talking to another when you're afraid, you know? And so in this case, my version is pantomiming a gun, you know? And, but in a way that's very realistic. And in his version, he is, um, he ha actually has a real gun, but it's two dimensional. And the gun itself just ends up being a shadow. And so it mixes up this idea of what's, what's actual and what's fake and, and what's real and what's virtual. And, um, and I think it speaks to the nature of like, it was such a great, it speaks to the nature of what we were trying to get at. And even me being an American that speaks no Spanish and him being a Mexican that speaks no English and having to communicate and get along and do this thing, which it was an incredible joy working with him and, and uh, showing with him and having him as a guest at our house. And, but um, to have this dialogue that, that, I mean, we were trying to play with stereotypes and trying to play with like false expectations, but deal with it in a way that um, maybe transcended that. Who knows if we succeeded? I love the piece. Um, and that's it.